So I've mentioned any number of times on this channel that screws are vastly superior to nails in terms of holding power. And I've even shown some tips for how to greatly increase the holding power of your average nail. But there are actually two types of nails on the market that have a holding capacity closer to screws. They're both widely available and they're not all that expensive. Today, I'm gonna to quickly discuss what these two types of nails are and when and where we use them. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. So the big differences in nail types are found in the shank of the fastener. That's the long shaft between the head and the point. Most nails on the market are a smooth shank, meaning they have no contours or texturing on the metal of the shaft. But these nails with superior holding power do have contours on the shank. The ICC calls them deformations, and their shapes fall into two distinct categories, ring shank and spiral or screw shank. Ring shank nails are easily identified by the raised circular ridges on the shaft. They sort of look like sharp ribs along the shank of the nail. Spiral shanks, on the other hand, have long tapered flutes that travel up the length of the nail. This gives them a screw-like appearance, but the flutes are very shallow and sometimes look more like twists. As mentioned, the purpose of these deformations is to create more holding power for each fastener. On a ring shank nail, the studded ribs act as threads, each ring biting into the surrounding wood and gripping it from within. And spiral shanks do virtually the same thing, except that they twist as they drive, carving a path for each tapered ridge. This creates an actual screw effect inside the wood, which adds to the normal friction strength that they generate. So the net effect of both of these nail types is that they're much harder to extract once they've been driven in. They literally lock themselves into wood, and it takes an insane amount of force to back them out. Just ask anyone who's ever had to demo anything built with ring or spiral fasteners. Prying out any individual nail is like warfare, and you'll often destroy the head of the nail or the wood around it before the shank ever lets go. For this reason, you really want to reserve the use of these fasteners for situations where extraction forces are going to be more of a problem. In construction, ring shanks are really the standard nail for roofing and roof sheathing, as well as subfloor or plywood underlayment situations. And they may also be used frequently in siding applications. This is because ring shanks are preferable anywhere that wood is being subjected to expansion and contraction. Excessive sunlight, precipitation, and extreme temperature changes all cause wood to swell and shrink. Smooth shank nails may get lifted in this process, but ring shanks will retain their position and keep lumber components connected. For this reason, code will often require that these fastener types are used in certain areas. Also, many, many ring shanks come collated for use in nail guns. This is because they're a high volume fastener. You use a lot of them when you're using them. But it's also because hand driving ring shank can be very difficult. They fight their way going in just like they fight their way coming out. But you will still find some hand drive ring shank roofing nails, like the ones my friend Kyle McLean showed me at Baker Roofing Headquarters. These shorter, heavily ringed fasteners are great for shingle replacements because they grip roof sheathing so tightly. Spiral shanks, in my experience, get used slightly less overall, but they're still a very strong fastener. I've used them most for various types of siding and exterior trim installations, especially when I'm not shooting with a gun. These two or two and a half inch hot dip galvanized hand nails drive themselves in like a screw and they're actually surprisingly gentle on materials. So they've been great for me to use with hardy board products like siding and fascia. And spiral shanks are also good for hardwoods from what I hear because of their turning boring action. So they'll also get used a lot in various flooring and subfloor applications. But in other cases, they're just overkill. Most actual house framing, for instance, is carried out with smooth shank nails. Unless otherwise specified by local code or an engineer's notes, smooth shanks are all that's required to join framing members together with adequate strength. Also, nearly all interior trim work is done with smooth shank trim nails or possibly even something thinner like 18 gauge wire nails. I've rarely seen ring or spiral used for these applications. If you think about it, that encompasses a massive amount of work carried out on houses, from rough framing to trim and finish. That's hundreds of applications, and all of them heavily dependent on smooth shank fasteners. And some DIYers seem to think that building everything with ring or spiral shanks is the way to go because it'll make everything stronger. That might technically be true, but like I said, it's just vast overkill for most circumstances. In situations where you think a ring or spiral shank might be better, I'll typically recommend bumping up to a screw. Like decking, for instance. Exterior screws are superior to any type of nail for holding down deck boards. And even fickle bowing trim can be reined in with a longer trim screw. These have the added advantage of leaving a small entry hole, which is easily puttied over. 
But that's a quick overview of our two contoured nail types. I do keep both types around and have found plenty of causes to use them over the years. I'll link a variety of these fasteners below if I can find them, so check the description for those links. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back soon for more videos coming up, and please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.